My name is Lee McIntyre and I'm a research fellow at the Center for Philosophy and History of Science at Boston University. And for many years now I've been what's called a public philosopher. Um, I write books for philosophical books but they're for the general public, uh, for a general reader and they're about problems that uh, you know, are problems in our society. Uh, I've been doing that for quite a number of years when I wrote the book Post Truth, which was really my, my big book, my, my breakout book. And that came, uh, I started that book just after the 2016 election when Trump was elected and the OED had just announced that uh, Post Truth was their word of the year. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. There needs to be maybe a, a book on that. And the interesting thing about writing a book, one of the first books with, I think I maybe had the first book with just Post Truth as the title, though other people had used the word in their title before, um, is that you get to define it. And I wanted to redefine it because I felt that the OED uh, definition, which was something about how um, when you know, alternative facts are more meaningful uh, for people's beliefs, uh, which are you know, based on feelings than on evidence. And I felt that that really didn't get to the why. For me, post-truth is about power. So in my book, Post-Truth, I defined that notion as the political subordination of reality. And I think that that's really what Trump was up to. If you look back at the early days of his presidency, when he was claiming that his inauguration was bigger than Obama's or that it didn't rain on his inauguration, in, in, and later when he claimed, you know, that the, I forget, Hurricane Dorian either was or wasn't going to go through Alabama. But it was this idea that he was so powerful that he could assert control over reality itself. Now, what that actually means is that he was hoping to influence the population. But the subtle idea here is that it's not just to get you to believe that a falsehood is true, because these were examples where there was empirical evidence to show that it wasn't true. Again, it was an assertion of power. He was saying, uh, I am powerful enough to tell you what's true and that's the reality that you actually live in. And that's a very dangerous thing. That's what authoritarians do. That's what autocrats and dictators do. And I don't think that people were ready for it at the time. And so I wrote Post Truth to talk about the roots of this notion, you know, where it came from, why somebody was doing it when, you know, they, and he wasn't the only one doing it, uh, when they could be overwhelmed by evidence. And so that was, uh, as I said, my first big book and that led, and I kept waiting for that idea to uh, go away, but it's, it turned out that post-truth has been really evergreen, uh, the topic, because when you look at January 6th, I think that is the ultimate example of post-truth, where it's based on the big lie. It's based on this idea that I can tell you this enormous lie that has no foundation in reality, but enough people believe it that they're, it's going to have real-world consequences. That's why I think post-truth is and remains such a dangerous notion.